Okay, I want to share something really interesting that I found from San Francisco Chronicle. I ended up paying, I think they have a special on this for 35 cents to, to subscribe. You could cancel any time. I think you should highly support it. Danielle Echeverria did a great job gathering a ton of really good data. Um, but let's just jump straight into it. Uh, this is the average GPA. So the way I understand it, this is the average of total applicants. This is the average of those who got accepted. And this is the, the enrollees is obviously the average of those who chose the acceptance and uh, committed to the school and enrolled. Uh, they have it specifically for UCLA. So this is a good metric for a tier two school for me that uh, ultimately gives like, it's kind of like an entry into potentially being also a tier one student because the, the chance of admissions has dropped to like 9% or something. So it's becoming Ivy League territory to get into LA and Berkeley. But first, before we begin, something really interesting to note. A lot of times I get parents asking me questions about GPA, specifically to UCs. Uh, ninth grade doesn't matter, right? Because they'll only look at 10th and 11th grade. So there's a little bit of, generally that's the right way to think about it for uh, if you're just assuming like a conventional school. Uh, but more nuanced is to think of it this way. In total, the UCs look at three GPAs. They look at the weighted, capped GPA, the fully weighted GPA, and the unweighted GPA. The weighted capped GPA, in an effort to account for differences in what schools offer, caps the number of extra points that can be added to honors or AP classes to eight. The information in the Chronicles data tool below, it's going to be the weighted capped GPA. So uh, my suspicion has always been that uh, it's not just 10th and 11th grade, especially if you're going to be competing for competitive campuses. Uh, or uh, trying to apply to competitive campuses like UCLA and Berkeley, um, uh, say with even more competitive major choices like computer science, they're they're going to have to delineate students somehow because of just how stacked those fields are. Uh, but without further ado, look at this. So I've been playing around a little bit with the numbers. It's interesting to see highest GPA average of those who apply. Does this mean that? the school tends to be better at getting students accepted uh, to UCLA's, to UC schools. There's data on that. So on a separate page, and you can find all of this when you subscribe to them, uh, these tools, uh, they have acceptance rates. And if you look at Sage Hill, 82% uh, of students will apply to UCs and 76% of them will be admitted. So the school you go to can definitely set the tone for for your likelihood of getting into mid-tier ucs and if not top tier uc the, the upper tier ucla and uc berkeley uh there are other schools that have this high gpa but don't reflect the same way so i was looking at the number of so highest gpa in california of admitted students they tend to all come from public schools and uh, it's garden grove but garden grove doesn't show up with the same percentage of stats in terms of getting accepted. So in other words, sometimes looking at a, a, a GPA can potentially show an inflated sense of, of its value uh, to, to admissions. Uh, but then again, you have Uni High, uh, very, very competitive school. Um, it's interesting to note, you got Irvine, you got Woodbridge, 4.3, Portola is, I know a lot of tough, tough competition goes on there, but still around 4.3. Uh, and then you have Northwood, interestingly enough, at 4.3. Some schools will limit how many APs you take in ninth and 10th grade. And uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't, so long as you're competing within your high school uh, and succeeding and excelling with what they're offering, uh, it's okay. You don't need to have to go outside and take additional AP courses. You may want to do it because you got a couple of Bs and you want to GPA boost a bit, maybe. But uh, yeah, it's interesting to note all this. Overall, the trend of getting into UCs has gotten extremely, extremely tight. Um, there's a lot of data on this. I suggest, hey, if you can support, it's like 35 cents and review all this, check out your school in particular for a day or two, and uh, maybe that could be helpful. But um, I hope that this is a good tool for people to use. I, I'm, I'm looking at it, and I'm seeing that uh, your GPA – yeah, you can ballpark it. You could be around a 4.3. You have to be an unweighted 4.3 to be competitive for UCLA and UC Berkeley. 
but that comes with a lot of asterisks that 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 fits the general pattern that I'm seeing here. Um, obviously, there's so many other factors, essays, extracurriculars, but yeah, I wanted to show one other thing. So the U.S. acceptance search for every high school in California and UCLA's acceptance rates. Here it is. So here's something really interesting. Um, this year was was super tough. I, I, I feel like you can say each year it gets harder and harder. The, the record gets broken for number of early applicants, number on the wait list this year. All that stuff happens almost every year. But this is the first year that I really felt that difference in difficulty. Um, and when you see it from a macro perspective, it, it, it's kind of alarming because take a look at this. So again, this is San Francisco Chronicle. Shout out to them. Go ahead and support them. Uh, if they keep continuing to bring out content like this, it's going to be awesome. Um, Berkeley was 24% acceptance rate 20 years ago. <laughs> 10 years ago, it's 18%. Now it's 11%. What's super alarming to me is Irvine. So you see Irvine, 57, 42, and now 21%. 21%. So uh, I often see this it reflected that, that um, this type of notion of how quickly it's changed, it's, it's missed in a lot of, I think, parents that I talk to. They still think about UC Irvine, UC San Diego, UC Santa Barbara, more like it was fall 2002. Right, not even 2012. They're, they're still looking at it like it's 2002, and then there are the parents who've been kind of keeping their their antenna up, or listening to their maybe their their kids in high school talking about the current seniors or, or and and their results, and they're getting the idea that it's not like that anymore. It's it's much more extreme. And here are the numbers. You're, it's kind of it's kind of mind boggling to see just how competitive it's gotten. Um, yeah, I hope that this was helpful. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm a huge fan of data, and I think this would be something fun to go through at the very least, I think. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to stop rambling. Thank you for your time, and hope you're having a happy, uh, I hope you had a happy Easter weekend. Ciao.